Kramer? Here. Mr. Carney? Here. Mr. Mariano? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Thank you. Do we have any uh, recognition? Don't have any recognition. Um, no, just, just various aspects. I want to thank everybody uh, for their time, um, hard work, budgeting. That's sort of the, uh, one of the hot topics on the agenda. This evening, trying to balance that, Christina, Kim, everyone who has been involved in this process. I, I told her in the executive session how proud I was of everyone. Um, it's been a tough spring, but thank you for your time, your diligence. Um, the entire business department, every administrator involved in budgeting has really rolled up their sleeves and, um, and assisted with this budget. So hopefully we're, we're making some headway and moving forward, and, and we'll see that shortly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, at this time, I'd like to ask if there's anybody in the public who would like to make a comment, please step up to the mic, give us your name and address, and Five minutes. Well, tonight. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I would like to let everybody know we did have an executive session prior to this session, and uh, we did discuss personnel matters. Our superintendent's report. Um, again, basically, just gave that with the aspect there. There was a summary. We have some in the year things that were happening. I spoke to you earlier. Um, and at the earlier meeting in the month, graduation was great. Um, just planning for next year. Thank you. We have a solicitor's report. And there's a report. Can I report to them? Okay, I'd like to get a motion to approve our meeting minutes from May 8th and May 22nd, 2018. So this the summary will read, the superintendent recommends an ISO move to approve the meeting minutes of May 8th, 2018, May 22nd, 2018. Is that good? Mr. Kern first. Second. Mr. Kaczynski second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Informational agenda. Any update on the Education Foundation? Okay. What I would suggest for the Education Foundation as, uh, as we roll into our uh, new communication uh, piece for Charter Valley School District is that we find a person who would willing to work with the board uh, with the education foundation. So I think it's really something we have to figure out who that person is going to be and get, get a seat on that board. So uh, I would like to see us uh, discuss that in the future session. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kramer, Pathfinder. Uh, Pathfinder, we had a meeting last week. I sent a pretty lengthy email out to all board members. Um, still the largest topic on our agenda. What we do did have graduation ceremonies were great. Um, we graduated six students, um, took our enrollment down to 72, but there's already five new kids committed, or students committed for the fall, so we're representing one of our current uh, enrollment, so that, that enrollment seems strong and good. Uh, biggest thing on the agenda, um, as I sent out the email, is the roof replacement. We, um, we interviewed the uh, architect, David McClain. Who came in? Uh, we have an estimate from Garland, the Garland Company, for five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars for the roof replacement. Um, we are now investigating whether um, to use Garland's services. They can do the work as a construction manager, or to hire an, uh, an architect to oversee the process and take it out to bid. Uh, bid to different roofing systems rather than just Garland's system. So. Uh, we decided to table the decision at Wednesday's meeting, all come back to our home districts, talk to our superintendents and uh, finance directors, and get advice, our facilities directors, and then meet back up and make that decision when we get to our next meeting in August. Hopefully they go with your option. What's that? Hopefully they go with your option. Yeah, so we'll see. Thank you. Okay, uh, Parkway, Mr. Ford's not here tonight. Did anybody, uh, he didn't forward the report to anybody, so I put the table at the next meeting. Uh, is any of those shots? Nothing. Nothing very large. Report. And our finance committee report. We did not have a finance committee meeting tonight. Thank you. We'll move on to our consent agenda. Um, the consent agenda will consist of items 7.1 through 7. 
2-0. We will take individual uh, votes on 718, 719, and 720. Okay. So we'll, we'll pull those out of the consent and individual vote on those. So please review the consent agenda. Or seven seven plus one, seven one consent as well. And then, yeah, we'll call it that. Uh, Those are action discussion items. Yeah. 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 So we'll, we'll do seven, uh, 18, 19, and 20 separately. And then we'll just roll 21, 22, 23, 24. Sometimes we get a, a college that we may not typically well, oh, that's a different one. Mm -hmm. And that would be the reason that we have to mm -hmm. obviously have an agreement with them for us to have house their student teachers. So this agreement is for how long? One year. So how many agreements are we have in place? Um that I do not know off the top of my head. Do you have to more on sales? Local universities. Mm -hmm. I can count. Yeah. I mean, I can you go back to um, yeah. Bethany, IP, Slippery Rock, University of Pittsburgh, um, Shadow, Duquesne, yep. Um, Shadow, Robert Morris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have missed for teachers. Oh, no, 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 We speak to uh, a little bit about the uh, time it took, and I know the business office did a uh, due diligence on the uh, copiers and that agreement. So, could you speak to that for us? How that process went? If the district ended up benefiting from that process, and how that went proceed? Um, yes, thank you very much. Um, Scott and I developed an RFP process for the copiers, distributed to a number of vendors received proposals on June 15th um, on copiers, and um, we received some very, very attractive uh, proposals from three vendors. They included Comdoc, who is our current vendor, the Wilson Group, and Ford Business. Um, currently, under the current Comdoc agreement, without any overage expenses, our lease agreement is $12,313.50 per month. Under the new proposal, based upon Comdoc's um, proposal, it's $10,787 a month. That's a saving of over $1,500 a month. Um, the Wilson Group submitted their proposal at $10,717 a month, and for business, it's at $12,928 a month. 
our proposal is to the board is to approve conduct, and there are additional reasons for that. Um, some of the distinguishing reasons are that Comgop will allow up to five larger volume um, multi-function uh, printers to be installed in the district, that are installed in the district, to remain in the district without any additional expense. Um, and we'll relocate those devices to where it's more hot, highly needed, and Mr. Kelly can talk about that. Um, we also, Comgop is going to be replacing 22 of our, our multi-function printers with these newer Xerox uh, desktop units. Um, again, we'll be a, a complete Xerox shop as we are today, as opposed to the Wilson Group, who is proposing um, Sharps and Brothers. So we would have two different types of printers <coughs> with the Wilson Group as opposed to having all Xerox. And we think that's a really key benefit. Um, we also looked at the uh, overage, the, the overage um, differences, and the overage cost on the home drop for power is 0.039 cents per copy. The Wilson Group was proposing two different price levels, whether it was an overage on the Sharp or an overage on the Brother. The Brother's um, copiers would be the areas where you would we would expect to have a higher volume. So I looked at going back a year to see where were the months that we had over 4,800 copies per month. And there were two months last year. Um, that break even between the two proposals, Wilson and Tom Buck, was about 1,697 additional copies. And all of a sudden, we would be exactly at that break even point. So in those two months previously, this last year, we did have that situation. Um, so for those reasons, we are here to recommend that we enter into a full service lease with Comdoc. Um, I think Mr. Pell can talk about the printer management side. Um, we did have two RFPs. We sent one out for basically our copiers and one for our print services. So, Mr. Pell? Sure. <laughs> so for the district, we have somewhere about 80-ish uh, HP laser printers, and all they do is print out paper. That's all they do. Um, the 40 additional units that we asked to replace part of that inventory, half that inventory, are your desktop multi functions. Your scans, software, fax, all in one. The really my goal, every time a piece of paper comes out, it just costs us money. There's a structure, you know, this and that, but it costs money. My intention is if we have multi function devices, more stuff's going to be going into it. Data that we can curate and use as instructional resources. So um, it adds some functionality. And these devices will uh, they have direct connection to our uh, Google <coughs> user. All of you have Google email accounts to provide you. Uh, and I don't know if you use the drive functionality. You use that as storage. Your teachers do. Uh, these devices, you can walk up to it, put a piece of paper in, scan right to your your Google Drive. Um, so, much better use of devices than just the traditional ways of production. So, and in our attention, that uh, Christina mentioned that we had two uh, bids that actually went out one to maintain the multi function pieces of equipment and our copiers. Uh, because we're replacing half that copier inventory with these desktop units that have more functionality. We have like 40 other laser printers sitting around. So why pay someone to do maintenance on them when we have this inventory of 40 minutes? And uh, we just, uh, if something works, we can replace it with existing equipment. We actually had to look. Our current laser printers that we have, some are really big. I've been here 18 years. Some I bought for CRS <laughs> So, uh, no piece of equipment to replace them. You can find us up online, but I just got a box. So, it really doesn't behoove us to pay a company to support our laser printers, to be honest. We go to a live phone or somewhere and drop it to the real small. And that's by us doing that, if you look at the current situation with Comcast, uh, we were being charged set at $1,700 just to maintain all of these laser printers. So that's a direct savings right there by looking at the <coughs> going forward. 
Uh, I appreciate the report and I appreciate the board's uh, willingness to take it out to good because I think it really did benefit us by doing that. So, great job for going out and doing the due diligence and I'm excited to find the benefit as a district. Well, uh, so, I do have two, two follow up questions yes, related please. to copiers. So, what you know, technology changes really fast. So, uh, two, two questions. Um, 60 months. Talk to us. Talk to us about sixty months, five years. Just like a long time. Well, I can't speak to the financing element of it. I mean, Christina uh, can talk about the benefits that can get by potentially altering financing terms. So, uh, but if I we were to ask, so yeah, I said financially. Obviously, we thought five years because when you think about the useful life. We were estimating that the useful life of the existing technology, and that's where we have to ask. We have to talk to Scott about the actual technology changes. Our view is that in the past, we've had five-year terms on our copiers, um, and that seemed to be fine for us. And, and moving copiers or changing copiers frequently is a cost to us because obviously we have to therefore get all of the um, users all of the new information because every time you change it out, it does take time for everyone to get trained on the new devices. Our view is that our experience had been five years seemed to be acceptable to us. Uh, we're getting new technology, we're getting enhancements with these new products, and therefore the view is five years works well, as well as from a financial viewpoint, looking at a five-year term obviously spreads out that large cost over a longer period of time and therefore lowers that cost as opposed to a shorter period of time. Because if you think about the lessor, he's going out and purchasing this equipment on our behalf um, and therefore their their return, they're looking at their return on investment, whether it's a longer term or shorter term, we do a longer term, um, it gives them a longer period of time in order to recoup that investment plus the profit margin. So I get the math. Um, it just feels like we're taking on that risk. It feels like it, it feels like we're taking on that liability in a way, right? They're they're um, I mean that's their cost of doing business. So why are they passing that? And we're well, everyone. In. Pardon me. And we're getting locked in five years. Yeah. And are you are you saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, Darren? I'm saying it's a bad thing, and I'm, I'm waiting to talk about 710 approval of lease of laptops for five years when technology changes so rapidly. A teacher's laptop in five years, you'd be lucky if it worked in five years. Teachers uh, so currently, devices they have in their hands right now just finish their seventh year in business. And you're lucky. So before we go to 710, because yeah, I had, I had yeah, two questions. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, can we go back and say what would what, what would this be at three years versus yeah. five years? Five years just seems like an eternity. It is. We could, and one of the things I was going to suggest, we do have a member of the audience who is with ComDoc, correct? We mm do. -hmm. I was wondering if you had questions about the technology side, whether or not you'd want the resident who is, are you a resident? Yes, I am. <laughs> so so that's, that's one question. I, I, you know, I, don't, I, I, I don't have questions about the technology, just more, how are we protecting ourselves against the, the change in technology? Which is, leads me to the second question, yeah. which is, do we have, what's the provision in the contract for, as technology evolves over this course of five years, can we repurpose the dollars? Can we repurpose, can we train up? Can we get better technology? I just, well, we have things change. So what are the provisions? We have SLA language about uh, whether the device we feel is not this effective, not effective, that's probably not, if it has a, a breakdown cycle that's being deemed not appropriate, it, better has to replace that. Um, so that's defective. I'm talking about uh, new technology. So historically, I've not been involved in multifunction device uh, 
RFPs because it was usually lost historically. Most of the district is a business manager and most vendors did that. So when we took this RFP on, uh, the devices we have now, we currently lock up, we all have ID badges, our or ID badges, CNN, it synchronizes with our active directory, my contact directory, authentication you are. It does uh, cost accounting, it knows how many copies you make, uh, we can cost that all out. We can scan to our user directories. So these new devices, what do we gain? One of my primary things that we are able to put together, universal user interface. So you watch these, user, uh, these devices, these multi-function devices, whether it be a big 75 page per minute device, or a little 30 page per minute device. It's the same, you know, the same interface across. Cost we incur by training staff that works hierarchical people, it's hard to measure, but it's significant. Uh, it takes a lot. We will not. Call docs coming out with trainers. We're going to have to train 260 teachers. But you also have an employee just for the copy. Right. We have a person at the copy center uh, who was, by the way, up to 12 million sheets of paper we print per year. 70 5% of that is for the <coughs> young lady. That young lady prints 75% of 12 million copies. And how much do we pay for an online learning management software called Schoology? It's supposed to decrease copying? That's right. That's a huge initiative. There should, should be conversation about. So, those are all things that, that we can discuss. But I believe what Mrs. Murphy was asking. I think I'm wrong, was that when this equipment, if it so becomes antiquated prior to this contract eliminated in five years, how can we refresh accordingly? Yeah, and, and I'll just share, you know, I, I know we're doing this at, at my work right now, and it's one of these things where we're saying, you don't know where technology is going to be even in 18 months. So can we, re Will there, is there an opportunity for us to repurpose the dollars with Comdoc, for example? Is there, you know, in the contract, is there an opportunity <coughs> for us is to there do this that? Can we open it up if that really, happens? Yeah, I think we should be smart about mm -hmm. uh, about the time frame and about switching up of technology. So I guess I would ask the team if there's if there's um, support from the board to do this to, to take more look at it. Doesn't expire until August. August 31st, right, it's when the expiration of the current device, or the current lease. Um, so it would, if the next board meeting would not occur until early August, we wanted to have the equipment installed before the teachers came back to school. So that's why we felt getting it approved now. I wanted to also add, the reason we were, part of the reason we were looking at five years, in my previous school district that I was with, I think I was involved in three, two, or at least two, copier renewals, and we did the RFPs, and we went out for five years. And both of those times, um, both, both of those terms, we were quite satisfied with the fact that we felt that the technology on the copiers and the faxing, et cetera, in, both in and out, were sufficient for our needs during that period of time. So my perspective from a finance world was that I didn't think there was too much risk given this type of equipment. Um, I think if you were to ask us maybe about something else, I believe Scott may have a different answer. Um, so that was my perspective. Um, I think from a contract perspective, we have to review the contract. We can add language in there with regards to refreshing. Um, I'm not sure whether or not Comdoc will have a monetary reaction to that. We'll have to talk through that with them. This is a big contract. Yes, it is. It's a huge contract and a really good commitment. Yeah. So we should have some knowledge. So, do I hear that? Would you want to see? Would you want to see the language prior to any approval? I think we should probably vote um, to or at least take it back into executive session. I don't know. I think, let's see. There's the time is of the essence because this ends in August. So I don't know if you have any, I don't want to put you on the spot, right, I'm you, not, gentlemen, but um, if there's you know, any information that you can add regarding you know, the quality within five years, how that technically 
works? I would I would say that um, I would not be worried about a five year contract. I'd say ninety, probably ninety. I ninety eight percent of all um, education um, contracts that we uh, have in place are at least five years. Typically, when we see those shorter terms of thirty six or forty eight month. It's more with the technology driven organization that is going to constantly change. Um, I think the platform that Xerox is built on right now is open enough that apps can be written to fit anything that would kind of change in the education market. Like, um, we're getting into Xerox's latest and greatest uh, technology that was just introduced about 18 months ago. So, in my opinion, I would think there really isn't a risk from a technology standpoint um, with five years. Well, how, do we, how do we protect ourselves against that risk? Consider um, this. Well, I think what you're saying is if it drastically changes. Five years is for Are you just saying if it drastically changes three years from now, can we open it up and. Or, yeah, but what's the purpose right. for us to get better technologies? Technology changes. Can we build that into the contract? I think that's yeah. always something and that we, we negotiate. Yeah. You know, we already contract. customers, you know, prior to the end of the term, all the time to include school districts. So if there's a major change in the technology year where our equipment, um, I, mean, I can't even think of the situation where the equipment would. Um, satisfied to these from a technology standpoint, but uh, I mean, we do that all the time. I'm actually less concerned about the technology change in the project design, the level of service we'll need in five years. Because I know when my kids are in the district, we get a lot of, a lot less paper going today than we did right. five years ago. Right. Uh, and I perceive that we're using Google Drive, Google Docs, that type of thing, more and more and more, so I'm less the level of service we're contracting here, and I don't know what the price tiers are. The level of service we're contracting here, five years from now, we may be that's way more saying. than what we need. Right. Yeah, that's I don't know, maybe less than what we need. Right. So can we repurpose the dollars? Yeah. Yeah. From a service standpoint, the district is protected in, in our lease, uh, you know, with our accountability guarantee, that if a machine has certain um, instances where we can fix the device um, and are given grid notice that device can be removed from the lease. No, I think what Brian said is that as the demand goes down. Can I address that? I wrote the RFP that we put together. There's language we will be in to go over volume quotas and based on volume quota, our uh, lease agreement can increase or decrease. And that can be that can be done all the time. There's a lot of flexibility in the contract. And I think also from a budgetary uh, budgetary standpoint, with any lease, the shorter the life, the more expensive it's going to be. I mean, from a fiscal uh, viewpoint, from the provider and the district, we can look at a shorter lease, but it's going to cost you more money. Yeah, because I'm just looking at the side by side comparison. Last sixty month lease and this sixty month lease, it's hundred thousand dollars less. So to yeah, me that's right. Where is that why would why not doing that money? Is this one to negotiate? Yeah. That's all right. Thank you for all the input input from I also would, would like to have Scott while you're all, uh, talk about the Chromebooks and where we're going as a district with our technology that we're providing our students. Well, and this kind of touches on the clock here as well. You guys know this. Uh, what's the last time you got a CD and installed it into the CD drive your laptop and installed the software on there? Yeah, don't. Don't let them anymore. Because everything's a service, everything's web based, cloud based. Um, and that's what Google promotes on. It's much less mobile platform, mobile resources, 
and it's a randomized device. We support our students to the research material that create stuff on the Google uh, ecosystem, either Google Sheets, uh, slide presentations, uh, docs, whatever they utilize classroom, collaboration, and they're vastly more cost effective. We paid two hundred and some dollars, less than two hundred dollars for a Chromebook for a comparable uh, videos machine to paying five hundred and some change. So we had more than double the devices in a uh, Chrome Chromebook world than we do on a Windows one. So you know, we're seeing things go more and more as a service. You know, top enabled devices. And then from a, the instructional standpoint, Joanne, can you talk about what grade levels will be introduced to at what point for the, what the devices and what the teaching was there? Certainly. Actually, Mr. Kelly and I just had a conversation similar to that today. So right now, 6 through 12, um, we are purple, um, heavy in that capacity. I think that the upper class in the 11th and 12th grade are still on uh, Windows based machines. Thanks. And um, had that that would be phased throughout. Um, I was speaking to about our elementary buildings and what types of technology they have. And as of right now, it's a hybrid. We have iOS systems, our tablets, our iPads, um, in the primary, and a handful of those in various capacities in the intermediate as well. And in the intermediate school, we see the laptops, the traditional ones, and also the Chromebooks. The conversation was there's a time and place for multiple things, but how can we best streamline to maximize the instructional practices with our technologies and how is that going to work moving forward? And if our Chromebook is a device of selection, making sure that our teachers and our curriculum instructs and, and you know, leads to that as well. So uh, that's sort of our, our superficial technology face at this time for our students. Any other questions regarding? Oh, I would like to also touch on the bus uh, lease arrangement. Can we discuss that as well? Um, yes, we, as you know, we received approval in early June for um, the lease, and we are now in the process of reviewing the lease document. And we're getting that closed. Um, the buses are scheduled to arrive uh, towards the end of July, early part of August, that they begin the time for um, getting to school. Um, so I know we're working with um, our solicitor on the documentation, and uh, we'll be hopefully closing that soon. Great. Any other questions or comments regarding the open items on the consent agenda? And for public record, uh, 7.17 approval, approve the frame on part one uh, on change order 67, 68, 69. And that's a report that the district makes back to the state of Pennsylvania for our reimbursement program for our construction project. So we will, as the project, if, if there are change orders that have cost, that simply goes out, we get reimbursed a portion of that, a percentage of that money. I'd like to get a motion then to approve. John, you're going to have to help me here. Okay, 7.1 through 7.5, excluding 7.6, and then picking back up on 7.7 through 7.17, and then picking back up again at 7.21 through 7.23. That sounds so, like yeah, yeah, so stated in another way, it would be 7.1 through 7.24, exclusive of 7.18, 7.19, 7.20, and 7.6. Thank you. I slept you know to do it back. So good. Mr. Kramer first. Thank you. Mr. Kearney second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Mr. Mariano? Opposes. Gary, is that, is that a general no at all? Or? Yeah, I just, there, there's many questions. I definitely don't believe teachers should be uh, saddled with a computer that's five years old uh, in today's technology market. 
you should be forward thinking and given that iPads and laptops change so much, uh, you're locked in for five years. And, and there's this question about a uh, five year lease uh, versus a three year lease with um, hawking. It's just, there's too many questions. Thank you for your comment. Okay, so then we're going to pick back up at uh, Human Resources Report 7.6. Is that more, is there more on there than just one? Yeah, yeah. 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 we have four pins, I think, on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And then supplemental. Any recommendations on how we should break this out? Um, I, why don't you start with your first group? I think it's resignation of your one. So you could ask for a motion to approve the resignation as listed on your seven point six. So I would, uh, as part of the human resources report, vote, I would like to get a motion to approve the resignation of Luann Kiefner. Middle school cafeteria personnel, effective 619 18. I get a motion to approve that. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Lesnick? Second. Second, Mrs. Murphy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. She passes 8 0. Yep. So we are also going to ask for a motion to approve Michaela Duckstein as our new director of communications and strategic partnerships, effective July 1st, 2018. As per contract negotiated by the superintendent, I do a motion to approve that. Mr. Curry first, Mrs. Lesnick second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. I think we have two supplementals, so we can do those one at a time. Okay. Um, supplemental would be the <coughs> middle school, or Leanne McLean is our middle school yearbook sponsor for. School year 1819, as per CBFT CBA. I make a motion to approve the answer claim. Mr. Kramer, second. Second by Mr. Kaczynski. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Our next one is to uh, hire uh, Tim McConnell as our head girls varsity basketball coach, effective immediately as per the CBFT CBA. Do you want to do a roll call or just a school Do we just do this from the No, I don't think we That could fall the first one. Okay. Is that a motion? Yeah, I think it's a We'll get a motion to approve. We're going to get a motion to approve Tim McConnell as the head girls varsity basketball coach immediately as per CBFT CBA. So moved. Mr. Kuzinski, seconded by Mr. Kearney. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Let's, why don't we do a roll call because I can lost track of a number of voices at one time. So, just a little record. Nazarene? I'm in favor. Mr. Zinsky? Yes. Mrs. Eliza? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Hurney? Yes. Mr. Mariano? No. Mrs. Murphy? No. So, the motion moves. Wait, 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 we forgot. We forgot to vote. We forgot to vote. Wait, Brian, where are you? Sorry, I'm here. I'm here. the record. You're messing up. He's my own roll call. No, sorry. I got it. I had you here. All right, Mr. Kopeck. So I have the record. The motion passed 5 3 with Darren, Julie, and Brian voting. Other five members of it, yes. Okay. So, moved. that's all. We have a retirement. That's all. Oh, oh, that's all. Oh, that's all. 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 That's all.
apartment, June 8th, 2018, officially retired. So moved. Mr. Graham first. <coughs> Mr. Graham second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Did you deliver a piece? Thank you very much. Okay. On to item number 718. Been uh, much discussion over the last five, six months regarding our, our budget. I, I want to thank the business office and, and our administration for the time, energy, and effort it takes to balance the school budget under the current economic conditions of our state. Uh, so, with that said, I will read the motion. And we will uh, again do a roll call, I believe, on the Yeah, yeah we should do a roll call. Yep. So let me take a drink here first. The superintendent <laughs> recommends it, and I so move to adopt the, and approve the general fund budget for the Churches Valley School District to the amount of $65,319,031 for the fiscal year beginning the first day of July 2018 with the necessary revenue for the same period of the fiscal year beginning. July 1st, 2018, provided by Earned Income Occupation Privilege, I'm sorry, earned, in, earned Income Tax Resolution, Deed tra Transfer Tax Resolution, a Realty Transfer Tax Resolution, and an Occupation Privilege Tax Resolution adopted May 25th, 2004, and a Realty ta uh, Transfer Tax Resolution dated January 9th, 2007, and by a school tax on the real estate which is hereby levied and assessed at a rate of 17.0710 mills, or at a rate of $1.71 on each $100 of assessed valuation of tax, taxable property. And to adopt and approve the Churches Valley School District Budget Resolution dated June 26, 2018. All taxpayers required to pay tax on the real estate imposed by the school districts shall be entitled to a 2% discount within two months after the date of the tax notice. Shall be charged a penalty of 10% more than four months from the date of notice, and all delinquent real estate taxes shall be charged 10% interest unless taxpayers elect to pay such taxes in installments. The Board Secretary is hereby directed to append a copy of the budget to the minutes and to give notice to the Department of Community and Economic Development of the Act 511 taxes required by law. The budget is attached to our agenda. I make a motion to do that. Mr. Uh, uh, is there a recommendation from the Finance Committee? Is there an official recommendation? Yes. Yeah, the Finance Committee has a recommendation. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a, so we get a motion by Mr. Uh, Kearney, right. second by Mrs. Lesnick. And you want to do a roll call, please? Mr. Lazarini? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Lesnick? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Kearney? Yes. Mr. Mariano? Uh, no. Ms. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Motion passes. Seven to one. Seven to one. Thank you. Mr. Mariano, would you like to comment on why you proposed? Or? No. Uh, okay. I just think that uh, the district can do a better job uh, in watching its finances and uh, building its building. I think uh, a few years ago when the district decided to build buildings uh, instead of invest in their teachers, they made a big mistake and now we're feeling it. Uh, and I think every taxpayer in the district certainly doesn't want their taxes to go up. Uh, but we're feeling the repercussions of bad decisions made in the past. When you say invest in your teacher, what do you mean by that? We've got rid of teachers uh, every year. Through attrition. Yeah, through attrition. You've never, you haven't hired new teachers in positions. And, and I'm not talking about five or ten, we're talking about 50 plus. Uh, I, you know, the biggest. I would say the biggest effect a child has is the teacher in the classroom. When you raise class size, research shows learning goes down. We struggle with keeping class size uh, at a minimum amount. Uh, I think by getting rid of teachers through attrition, 
uh, was an easy way to balance the budget. Uh, but now uh, it's just not the right way to do with things. Uh, and given all the mandates from the state and everything, I realized budgets uh, are tight, but certainly we have to look all around uh, of how to balance a budget, and I just don't agree with this budget. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. All right, we move on to 7.19. This is a motion that the superintendent recommends an ISO move to approve the 2018-2019 capital reserve budget in the amount of up to $275,000 contingent on certain 2018-2019 capital expenditures that may be bid and approved at later dates. And this budget was provided by the business office and it was laid out what those capital reserves were going to be used for. Are you going to present the I don't know if the board would like me to put the slides up on the. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Everybody saw okay. it on their, okay. on their board. Yeah. So I get a motion to approve that. So moved. Yes, first. first. Second by Mr. Kopeck. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Mr. Mariana, would you like to comment on that? No, just the same. Okay. Thank you. 7.20, approve the Homestead Farmstead Resolution. The superintendent recommends an ISO move to approve the attached 2018-29 Homestead and Farmstead Exclusion Resolution authorizing Act 50 and Act 1 Homestead and Farmstead Exclusion for real estate tax deductions for the school year beginning July 1st, 2018. Can I get a motion? This is Leslie first. Mr. Kearney second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. So moved. Any comment on that one? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. We are down to. That was it. That was it. Fantastic. Um, again, at this point in time, I would like to get uh, anybody from the public who would like to make a comment, please step up and give your name and address. There is no one I would like to take uh, an opportunity to congratulate Mr. McConnell. Um, we, we welcome your uh, move from the boys to the girls. We, we really uh, look forward to seeing um, this girls program under your leadership prosper. Um, it's going to be a huge, a huge change for you, Tim. Um, if you'd like to say anything about what you plan on doing or, or, or what your thoughts are on the whole thing, we'd love to hear it from you. Say thank you for approving me to be a girls coach. I've been a boys coach for 25 years and I'm in love with the boys basketball program, but I think it's time for a change and the opportunity with the girls' job being open. I thought it would be a good opportunity, opportunity for me to take a new step in a new direction and help, you know, help these young ladies get the way they need to get. I think we have some new talent coming up. I think it's going to take a special person to. Bring them together. We have some, you know, some Division One players, and I'm looking forward to work. Our program will be built on one word: it will be success. We won't talk about wins and losses. I don't think you can judge success by wins and losses. I think we're going to talk about effort and how hard we work. And I think if we go out and work hard every night in practice and in the games, we'll be successful. And that's what we'll talk to the girls about. And we're going to try to win in a manner that will represent the school district well. So thank you for having me as your most basketball coach. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome the newest member of our team, Emily Eckman, to the to the table. So Emily, uh, welcome. Um, we're excited to have you in our business office. Um, looking for a great leadership in that department. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Yes. Can I make a few comments? Absolutely. Since this will be my last board meeting. What? Um, oh. This will be my last board meeting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't read that fine print. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to thank the board, first of all, for the opportunity. It's been 10 months. Um, so Flew by. It, it 
Um, so I want to thank all of you for the opportunity to join the group. Um, and obviously I want to thank the administration um, for working with me. Again, every school district is a little bit different. And Scott, I know I was in his office many, many days, many, many times. Um, so I just want to thank, it's been a pleasure. And my goal for this district was to deliver a budget where everyone knew what was included in each of the line items. And I think we've been successful in doing that. Um, and I know with Emily's guidance and leadership, um, I think this, we will be in a great position going forward. So once again, thank you. And you know, I look forward to, if there are any questions, I'm just a phone call away, an email away. And we're working on a transition plan. And I'm working with Dr. Joe, uh, Dr. Joe Hanna. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of how we can transition this, and it will be dependent upon what Emily's needs are as well. So, but I don't think I'll be here, so thank you. Uh, and I, I, didn't, I didn't realize how, but I, I would have mentioned it, but thank you for your service. You've no. really served this district well. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Yeah. And we will not be meeting in July, so, which is why, so we'll see you in August. Yes. Okay. I would like to you want to congratulate uh, She's not here. She, she left, so. Yeah, she, oh, she left. Yeah, she, yeah, she had to leave. But we did uh, also, uh, tonight's executive session, uh, bring in a new communications director, uh, Michaela Duckstein, and we are well excited about Michaela being on board. It's one of the areas that I think our district is uh, in great need of is better communication, amongst ourselves, amongst our district, amongst our parents, amongst our students. So we're excited to, to hand that torch to uh, Kayla to get her started. So she will be joining us uh, July 1st. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can I get a motion to, to adjourn? So, Mr. Kearney first. Mr. Kearney. I'll beat you to it, Kramer. I'll beat you to it, Kramer. Opposed. We are adjourned.